last month. Absolutely. It's something that uh, many people don't really understand until you've lived through it or worked closely with the families, just how challenging it is when someone goes missing, just not having answers, not knowing what's happening to them, listening to all that rumour and speculation that goes on, all the, the um, conspiracy theories that are expounded, and still waiting and waiting. Um, and it just is awful. And I'm de dealing with another family in the UK, uh, for um, Jack O'Sullivan, who's been missing for three months, um, and there's no uh, no information yet about what's happened to them. So the family are going through a dreadful, dreadful time. And made more tricky by the fact that it is abroad. Yes, it uh, adds, adds some complications. Um, working in, with different countries, uh, they have different processes in place and different ways of working. Obviously, there's a language barrier as well. Uh, but the basic principles are still the same. You gather the information, you understand the person and the circumstances in which they went missing, and then make an evaluation uh, to uh, determine where you're going to investigate or such. Uh, and I must say, in this particular case, it looked as though he had wandered off and this was the sort of uh, fall outcome that we sort of expected. Um, and that's been proven to be the, the case. And so it's, uh, as I said before in the programme, it's important to identify what you're going to do, how you're going to do it and keep your focus. But at the same time, look at all the other possibilities that may have happened and they have to be evaluated in the background and graded and assessed. Mm. Uh, the fact that that he who was nineteen, I mean, he ju just a just a teenager, you know, an apprentice bricklayer, an adult, th th that changes things, doesn't it? I if he'd been a, a few years younger, the search would have would have perhaps been of, of a different magnitude. Do you think? Well, it shouldn't really make a difference because what's is important is to evaluate the information and make an assessment of the immediacy and the urgency. Clearly, this was out of character behaviour. He did, and but you know, it's not hard to see that he was a high risk missing person, and it re deserved a high level response. And it's been very much in the the um, public's mind, in the media, and the police have been working hard at it, as far as we can see from the media reports. And so, yes, he he did get a a high level of response, and that's what it deserved. Charlie Hedges, we're going to leave it there. Thank you very much for now. Thank you for joining us. Missing Persons Charity, Charlie Hedges. We're just going to step away from this story uh, just to bring you uh, some footage um, coming in. We're seeing the plane carrying the England football squad returning to the UK. They have touched down at Stansted after the Euros final. They were, of course, not victorious at the end of the day. Right, so... The search teams have been out there this morning and they've come across the remains of a body in the area where J Jay Slater was reported to have gone missing. Now, had he fallen down into an area the searchers couldn't get to in the first place? It's hard to say, but this is what's happening. Right, this is a news update, so I'm just going to keep... I'll see if there's anything else going anywhere. So we can log into that, maybe. See what else is being said. Anyway, I'd just like to welcome you all to her uh, crime and justice. It was the last minute thing. I wasn't going to come live, but then I seen this on the TV because I've only just logged logged into YouTube. I've been busy all day, so uh, no, nothing live. Let's have a look. Oh, let's have a look. Mm, nope, nothing else is alive at the moment. There's 
most of the people are talking about Donald Trump. But there's other creators that are alive about this, but I'm not going to jump on their live. So, like I said, Jay went missing. Um, on the was it seventeenth of June? And they had a massive search for him for 12 days. Then the search was called off. And law enforcement over there was concentrating over information that was coming in. So the family never gave up. They kept going out there. They were searching. We had TikTokers who was out there searching you know what I mean? And then finally, they four weeks later, they had to wait. The family had to wait for the Spanish police to give authorization to say, yes, you can bring in another team. Why? Well, British didn't go over there because they, they didn't want to just go over there and do the search. They wanted the investigation. But the Spanish police wasn't letting them in on the investigation. And I think that was wrong. They should have. Anyway, so then they got this Dutch team to go over. They turned up, was it yesterday or this morning? Well, this morning they went out. So as you can imagine they turned up yesterday. Right? They went out this morning and then they found... I don't know if it's the, the new team that found the remains or the Spanish police. But if it was the Spanish police, then why didn't they find him four weeks ago? You know what I mean? Or was it in an area the Spanish police hadn't looked before? I don't know. But another thing that get bothers me is if Jay was up there, why were there no birds? That still bothers me because they've got neighbours who have said they have birds that come down to any dead carcasses like sheep that are up on the hills. If a sheep is dark dies, then they have um, these scavenger birds out. So if Jay was up in the mountains, like they believe he was, because they believe it's his body, they're not confirming it, they're not saying whether it is or not, but they believe it is, then why was there no birds? That's what keeps coming to my mind. Why was there no birds? Was he buried slightly under some dirt, maybe? Did they bury him? I don't know. So uh, I'm sitting here because I've now moved all my stuff into the balcony and I can see through into my kitchen. And um, my one cat is up on my work surface. And <laughs> he's coming up to the window now, moaning. So he'll probably jump up in a minute to get through the window into the balcony. But anyway, this is where we are so far. The search team have been out there. They've come across some remains. And we'll just wait to hear what else there is to be said. As I said, this was short notice. I wasn't planning on going live. So bear with me because this is straight off the cuff. You know what I mean? I'm going with as much information as I possibly can find. And let's have a look, see if I can find something here. Let's have a look. Let's have a look, see what we got here. I swear to God, my cat, I'm going to shoot it down. 
Nej. Right. Uh, let's have a look. Let's see what it says here. Okay, let's have a look. Uh, let's have a look. Don't worry, we will go back to that. But at the moment, we're still at the airport with the English players football team. So. Uh, right. I spoke cat to get down. Thank you. Right, let's have a look. It's set. Then I can get it to come up on your screen. Well, would help if I took this picture again, wouldn't you? Spread to God, this cat is doing raging now. Right. Let's read what it says. If I can get my mouse to fucking stop doing the jig around the screen. Um, rescue workers searching for missing British teenager Jay Slater in Tenerife have found a body and are trying to identify it. Police, Spanish police have told Sky News Evidence strongly suggests the remains are those of the 19-year-old officers added. The body does look to be that of Jay Slater, said LBT Global, a British overseas missing person charity which, was, which has been working with the Slater family. It added in a statement, it is understood the body was found close to the site of Jay's mobile phone's last location. But they've gone all over that. The family have that Chris Christopher from on TikTok has. I was watching him the other night and he was going all over that area. So that doesn't make sense. Although formal identification is just to be carried out, the body was found with Mr. Slater's possessions and clothes. A post-mortem and forensic inquiries will follow. Police said in a statement that the Civil Guard Mountain Rescue Group had located the lifeless body of a young man in the Masca area after 29 days of constant search. Uh, excuse me, Civil Guard. No, not 29 days. You didn't search for 29 days. Oh, God. They added, given the complexity of the case, the discovery has been possible thanks to the incessant and discreet search carried out by the Civil Guard during these 29 days. Oh, so they were doing searches. Okay. Parts of the countryside were preserved so they were not were not filled with curious onlookers. Fair enough. Officers went on. All indications indicate that it could be the young British man who has been missing since June the 17th, in the absence of full identification. The first investigation revealed he could have suffered an accident fall in the accessible area where he was found. We are waiting the results of the autopsy. Jay's family never gave up hope, she said Sky News correspondent Shingi Marik, who has reported from Tenerife. He argued they stayed in Tenerife throughout this month in which the search went on and they themselves tried to chip in with the search effort. The father is being out there every day. Right? We've had Chris, who lives in Tenerife, out there. And he, I saw a video the other day of him with some other guy, and there's another guy at, and somewhere else who was tracking him. He was tracking him to make sure they're staying on the right track, right? And now it's all over that area where that phone last pinged. They literally was all over it. Right. 
Right, yeah, the staging chain rate reefs throughout the month in which the search went on, and they themselves tried to chip in with their search effort. I spoke to his dad, Warren, on a number of occasions as he went to the area, as he tried to trace Jay's steps, and he was devastated. He was extremely upset about what had happened. And what we have now is potentially in the news that they really didn't want to hear. Police commentator Graham Wetton said the geography of the area where Jay Slater went missing made the search much harder. Clearly, the terrain is exceptionally difficult to navigate, but especially to search through and property, thoroughly and properly with the resources, the equipment and taxi, tactics they was using, he said. Mr Slater was heard, last heard, of, heard from after setting off to walk from the northern area of the island back to the holiday accommodation in the south, a journey of about 11 hours. He flew out to the Spanish islands with friends on the 13th of June to attend a music festival at the Papi Gallo nightclub in the southern resort of Playa de la America. Three days later, at 8.30am on 17th of June, he called his friend Lucy Luck. Well, we know that isn't true. We know that bit isn't true. Because it shows on her phone. It was her phoning out, not him phoning him, her. His phone battery was on 1% and he cut his leg on a cactus. Hmm. On Sunday, his mother, Debbie Duncan, said the family cannot put into words the heartache they have been through. She said her son was loved by everyone and has a close bond with family and many, many friends. Mr. Mr. Duncan added, we are aware of the awful comments and whatever. These theories are hindering the people trying to help us in the investigation. Hmm. Okay. And that's all I got there on that. So, let's go back to this, see if they've gone back to... No, they're still at the plane. So, I'm not watching that. Let's see what else there is to be said. I'd like to know where about his body was found. Because no way was his body found in the area of where his phone pinged. Because Christopher has been all over it. His father, his brother, his uncle... Other searches have been all over that area. The TikToker, he's been all over that area. So unless he fell down a ravine, which is quite a distance from where the phone pinged, right? Unless he fell down a ravine, then fair enough, because Christopher did try and get down to one part, and he did get down, but he couldn't go any further. He said, I cannot go any further. I just can't do it. He hadn't got the right equipment to do it. He said, so there's no way someone like Jay was going to get past that area. He had trouble getting out of it, out of that area himself. He had real trouble getting out of there. And he had the right equipment on, the right shoes on, the right clothing on. He had the right amount of water with him, everything. But he struggled to get out of this, like, ravine. And he said, when he got down to the bottom, he said, they can't, no, you can't go any further. Unless you've got ropes or something, you're not going to get any further. <laughs> so... If he's gone further than that, if his body was found further past there, then I'd like to know how his body got there. Because that area has been scoured. Unless it's gone down one of them deepest ravines, then it's not, I wouldn't say it was by the phone. I'd say it was up in that area where the phone pinged. Right, but that area is a big area. But I wouldn't say right, right by where his phone pinged or in the location of where his phone pinged. In the area, yes, but not in the immediate area, not not where his phone would ping. 
uh, it's sad. For some reason, I can't get to, to stream onto X, so I'll just have to post it onto X afterwards. It's like, what's it saying? A premium account on X is required in order to stream on that platform. You can see, I've been streaming on X for, since the beginning. So that do not make sense. I've always streamed. Why? My the last couple of lives. No, my lives were going to X, yeah. Yeah, my lives have been going to X. Since then, I've been doing videos. And I've been having to post my videos onto X separately. Because you don't go live. It's not live. So, I don't understand why it won't let me stream onto X now. And I'm not paying any other £19 for X. I'm not. Sorry. Not happening. I'll just... When I finish here, I can just click on the link and share it to X that way. So, I'm keeping an eye on this. Uh, let's see if there's anything else that's come up. Hmm. Uh. Major clue about Jay Slater's movements hidden in last phone call before disappearing. Hmm. It's just weird. The only thing I can think of is foul. Unless his body was put there. Because you remember those text messages that apparently was coming from Lucy to a friend. And her friend said, how's Rachel and Brad? And apparently Lucy replied, uh... Brad keeps having nightmares about seeing Jay in the ditch. What ditch? You know what I mean? I still think they had something to do with him. I don't think he left, went up there on his own accord. I think if he did go up there, if he did leave that Airbnb, he left because he was scared. Because there's too many inconsistencies. Like, I was watching the TikTok at Paul Arner, and he was doing, he just did this, uh, like a minute long video, and he said, for some reason, people keep asking me to go and look at the front door of the Airbnb. So he did, and he got a video, and he's, and he's going, I don't know why they keep asking me this, but I'm going I'm to do it. So he got up to the front door. And apparently it said that the doorbell, <laughs> listen to this, was like a ring doorbell. It had a video on it. Video. There's no flipping ring doorbell or any doorbell of any sort on that fucking door. There's no video camera. There's no ring. There's no doorbell. There is nothing. So, Cuisine, get your facts straight. Start telling the truth. You know what I mean? Christ's sake. There's nothing on that door to show a doorbell or even a ring door. And ring doorbells aren't small. They're quite bulky. You can see it from the end of the pathway. Oh, they've got a ring doorbell. Oh, they've got a ring doorbell. Oh, they've got a ring doorbell. People think my doorbell is a ring doorbell because of the size of it. You ring it and then it'll come through on my phone. Right? Unless you hit my doorbell, it won't come through. It won't, feature, it won't show me who's at the door. Right, so it's not a ring doorbell. It's not like the ones you do see. You have to hit the button and then it'll come through on my phone. And after time, it comes through on my phone and I don't even bother checking my phone. I just see it come up so I go automatically go and answer my door. 
But I want one of them ring doorbells. If I think that one's a ring doorbell, I might as well go and get a flipping ring doorbell. Because at least then I can see if anyone's coming to my door when I'm not at home. When I'm at my son's or when I'm at my daughter's. You know what I mean? And I can just tell them politely, feck off. But no, um... Come on, there's got to be more on here, but are you just trying to tell us that is it? Come on, you're going to give the English team that didn't even come home with a cup more time than this lad. They haven't even got off the flipping plane yet. Oh dear, I've had to take some bags on. Why is that? Anyway, so I don't know what's happening, but that is what is so far happening. That a body has, body remains of a body has been found in the area. I wouldn't say in the direct area of where the phone last pinged because that has been scoured. Literally, everyone has been over that area. Everyone has been down that pathway. And up in them bushes as far as I could get. Because Christopher isn't even a qualified hiker or climber or anything. And he went down into a ravine. Right? As far as he could go. He was adamant to make sure he covered that park. There was him, another guy with the camera, and someone somewhere else in a wherever, in the hotel room or back at their home in the office, whatever, watching and tracking their movements. And he said, if I go off track, just give me a call so I can get back on track. And this is what this third guy was doing, watching him, tracking him and his movements as to where he was going. So he covered a big area the other day. He really, really did. Let's see if I can find that and I can sh perhaps watch that. Is it going to me just see that going on? Was it TikTok? It'd be TikTok when you. Oh dear. What are the TikTokers going to talk about now? Right. Right, Christopher, there you are. Oh, let's see if I can find that. Because I'm not joking, I thought, oh my God, you're putting yourself in danger there, Chris. I know you're with someone else, but if you get stuck down there, that guy can't help you up there with the camera, right? They're going to have to call the search team in to get you out. Uh, let's see where it is. Come on. Uh. Quite a few short little videos then. And then put them all together as one. Where they are now is where the phone last pinged. From the top road down to here. The only place you can sit down. He'd have been knackered. He'd have been cut. He'd have been grazed, scratched, exhausted. Bulldozing his way through that in shorts and a t-shirt. What? Are you just 
that's how easy it is done. And I've got the right kit on. Yeah, I'm sat on right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's sat down where I'm sat down now, looking at the ocean. Made that call to Lucy. This is exactly where his phone pinged. He's in about, uh, hang on, mate. Right about there, right? So that was that. Let's have a look. Is this the next one? Oh, no, sorry. I think no. we're right on the point. Now, we're using the... We're past this. Right, let's go with this one. Right, so coming out from where the phone pinged the rocks, where... Could be the place where Jay last sat and made that call to Lucy. Or I Brad. I know he's sitting. Or Brad. He said I didn't know it was hearing him on the phone. Sound of falling rocks. His phone died. That would have been the view. Now, falling rocks. Could have been coast. Brad falling down rocks. I'm not telling you about the falling rocks. We know if he follows that path, it takes him back to the main road. Jay wouldn't have known that. He's not walked here before. For him, that could be a trek up into their mountains. Put I yourself in the mind of Jay right now. Look like you're going back to the mountains. Don't you? Now you're anxious. Now your phone's dead. You've got no contact to the outside world. You've got no idea where you are. Human nature, path of least resistance, follow gravity. You can see the ocean. I want to make it to the beach. Is it more likely he went down and headed to the beach where he believes civilization is? Or is it more likely he went on a path, he doesn't know where it leads, back up into the mountain when he's tired? Right, so coming out from where... Yeah, if that had been me, I'd be thinking, right, they're getting where I am. Yeah. That looks like he's going back up in the Could hills. Be the place where I'm going to go down made that call to Lucy. So I can understand that point. Or Brad. Or Brad. He said to Brad, look where I am. Sound of falling rocks. His phone died. That would have been the view. Now, he's heading for the coast because he's just come through all that. We know if he follows that path, it takes him back to the main road. Jay wouldn't have known that. He's yeah. not walked here before. For him, that could be a trek up into their mountains. Put yourself in the mind of Jay right now. You're tired. Now you're anxious. Now your phone's dead. You've got no contact to the outside world. You've got no idea where you are. Human nature, path of least resistance, follow gravity. You can see the ocean. I want to make it to the beach. Is it more likely he went down and headed to the beach where he believes civilization is? Or is it more likely he went on a path, he doesn't know where it leads, back up into the mountain when he's tired? He'd go downhill. I know I would. If it'd be me, I'd be going, that's going back up that flipping hill, you know what I mean? I'm not going uphill. Right, let's have a look. Now, Jay's come out of one load of thicket. He's cut and scratched. He had T-shirt on and shorts. He had to go all the way through it. I've just gone 10, 15 meters and look at the state of my arm. He had shorts on and a t-shirt. He'd been scratched, grazed, cut. At this point, he stood on this path. What decision do you make? You're heading for the- uh, Next go. Uh, let's just go to the speed. All right, Luggy. So we are stood on the on the mission map. We are stood on the RP. Romeo Papa. This is the landscape. It's quite steep. It's difficult to get off. This is where I came off the other day. We're heading down on your, on that path on the on the map you've done for us. We're going to come off here and follow it. If you see us veer 
Um, so obviously I've got images, but not a live map that you've sent me. If you see us veer off course, I've got really good signal still. So um, just give us a call and we'll get back on course. All right. Cheers, mate. See, this guy hasn't been All right, look, so anything. we are stood on the, city or anything. The, on the mission map. We are He's stood on the RP. Case. Romeo Papa. This is the landscape. It's quite steep. It's difficult to get off. This is where I came off the other day. We're heading down on your, on that path on the on the map you've done for us. We're going to come off here and follow it. If you see us veer, because um, obviously I've got images, but not a live map that you sent me. If you see us veer off course, I've got really good signals still. So um, just give us a call and we'll get back on course. All right. Cheers, mate. Right, so they've got someone back in the office watching their movements, tracking them. Uh, that's right, I'm just going to check as well. No, they're still at the airport with the English fans. I'd like to know, if that is Jay Layer found, I'd like to know where about the founding. There we go. Put this way down. On your ass. No, is there any more? Yeah. So yeah, I've come, come off. Like I say, you know, once you're off, I ain't going back that way. <laughs> Talk about being committed, so. I need to get into that water crest. Crescent there. Follow that to the V notch. And then I'm meeting Adrian at the uh at the RV uh, RV point over there. Um yeah, this is uh so yeah. No. So But as I said, he was all over that, yes, the other day. He was all over there. He'd gone down into that Branco area. Mm, uh, I'm not getting any more news update because they're just showing us the England squad who was sitting on the fucking plane, too embarrassed to get off the fucking plane. They're not coming out to yay, yay. Waves of fans. Let's see if I can get. All 
Mm -hmm. right. joins me now from washington uh, david there are so many questions about how on earth this happened and what a security oh, failure was allowed about that. yes huge questions about No. Right. Oh, walk. Well, it's this area near Mascal in rural Deteno Park where remains have been found. A statement from the Spanish police says that the Mountain Rescue and Intervention Group of the Civil Guard has located the lifeless body of a young man in the Masca area after 29 days of constant searching. Without full identification, all indications are that it could be the young British man who has been missing since the 17th of June. The first investigations reveal that he could have suffered an accident or fall in the inaccessible area where he was found. Well, we've had another statement. This one is from the Overseas Crisis Support Group, LBT oh no. oh Global, no. who are helping. Isn't it funny how the Spanish search teams have now found him today? just as the Dutch team was coming in. Um, isn't that funny? And I found him today, just as the Dutch search team was coming in. That makes me... Hmm. Jay Slater's family, and they say... LBT Global is saddened to announce that a body found in Tenerife does look to be that of Jay Slater. It's understood the body was found close to the site of his last mobile phone location. Although formal identification is yet to be carried out, the body was found with Mr Slater's possessions and clothes. A post-mortem and forensic inquiries will follow. They go on to say that LBT Global are supporting the family at this distressing time and ask for everyone to afford them space and privacy to come to terms with the news. Well, we've also, in the last few minutes, had a statement from Lancashire Police. They say, we have today been notified by the Guardia Civil that they have found the body of a man and that the indications are that this is Jay Slater. While at this stage no formal identification has been carried out, our thoughts are very much with Jay's family at this time and we continue to offer them our support. Well, for the latest on this, I'm joined by Please Sky say. correspondent Shingi Marariki. And I Shingi, uh, the family had not given we up hope, had, had they? They'd uh, taken money from the GoFundMe account to, to pay for uh, a team from the Netherlands who were due to arrive today uh, with dogs to continue the search. Yes, that's right, Jane. After 29 agonising days, this will be the worst possible news for Jay Slater's family, who, like you say, hadn't given up hope, who were still trying to pour resource and emotional energy into the search effort, which had been going on for nearly a month now and was taking an emotional toll on them. We understand that their family are still there. A statement yesterday from Jay's mum, Debbie, reminded us of the impact this was having on her. She talked about how this was unimaginable and how difficult it was for them to spend this amount of time without their son. And just to come back to this case, which has been shrouded in so much rumour, so much social media noise and speculation, Jay Slater was out at a music festival in Tenerife. On the third day of that festival, we understand that he met two men near where he was staying. He then took a car with those two men to the rural area of Masca in Tenerife, which is rugged, difficult to get around. There's our pictures are showing there on the screen. Um, and then we know that he allegedly attempted to try and walk back to where he was staying. That walk could have taken 11 hours. An eyewitness who we spoke to when we were there said that he asked where the bus was going, what time the bus was coming, before walking in the wrong direction. We know around about that time he spoke to some of his friends, telling them that he was trying to make the walk back, that he had no water, that his phone was running out of battery, that he had pricked his foot on a cactus. The search operation formally continued for 12 days before the Spanish Civil Guard said that they were calling it off. But we understand now that as part of a search operation that's continued, they have found a body which, by all indications, matches the description.
description of that of Jay Slater with his belongings, his clothing there with that body. And a couple of things stand out in those statements that we have. One of those is the fact that they are talking about the, the potential injury to the person who they found saying that they may have suffered a fall, which is a reminder of how difficult it would have been for someone with no phone battery, with no water, to try and navigate that landscape. They also talk about how they tried to seal off the search area, um, which is a kind of reminder of the fact that there were people who traveled from the UK to Tenerife to join the search and that that speculation which started online then became uh, part of a kind of real life effort to look for Jay. And at the heart of this was a family who stayed in Tenerife who had been supported by the money from that GoFundMe fundraiser and who were utterly bereft. We spoke at various points to Jay's father, Warren, who traveled up those, uh, traveled up to Massacre, traveled up to the mountainous region in an effort to retrace his steps and efforts to join the search operations. At a point, he said to me, I just want my son off this mountain. And he would often ask reporters how they would feel if they were in this position, if they were parents and they had no idea where their son may have been. And they were surrounded by all these questions and social media speculation as well. But we now know that a body has been found in what looks like the worst possible news for Jay Slater's family. OK, Shingi, thanks very much for that. Well, let's bring in Peter Kirkham, former Detective Chief Inspector with the Met, who joins us now. Um, and, and Peter, it's a month since Jay went missing. Uh, is it unusual for it to take so long, do you think, for the police to find a body which appears to be very much in the area where they thought he'd gone missing? Uh, not really. Not, not in um, an area where uh, access is so difficult and the terrain is so difficult, uh, as has been the case here. Uh, everything is very, very slow. Um, there are always going to be, when a sort of sweep goes across uh, one particular area, there'll be parts of it, uh, gullies and crevasses and such like, uh, that can't be searched at that particular moment, and they'll be marked up as not searched yet. And slowly specialist teams will go back and work their way through those, which I suspect is probably what's happened here. Uh, in, in the, the uh, it would seem like the area has been searched before, but quite probably uh, not in the level of detail in relation to the more inaccessible points like the crevasse. And with a, po a post mortem examination, is I am now expected to take place. How long should we expect that probably to take? So it looks like it well, the post mortem okay. will take a number of hours, uh, and it, it it will be the logistics of uh, where that's going to be. And, and get an appropriately qualified pathologist and, and the support that they need in order to do that um, with, within, within London. And they'd be done within a few hours. The families um, or certainly, you know, the next, the, early the next day. Um, the results may or may not be um, available to the police um, immediately. Uh, things that are obvious, hmm. things that are How seen by the pathologist during the post-mortem, they'll be brought to the attention of the officers. There'll probably be an officer at the post-mortem, uh, so they'll know about them right from the very beginning. Uh, but the conclusion of the pathologist, the opinion of the pathologist in terms of what, if any, of the injuries uh, was potentially fatal, um, that may follow. And things like toxicology and uh, other tests that maybe need some sort of laboratory analysis, uh, they will take some time afterwards. Uh, and only when all of those are in will the pathologist be able to give a final definitive yeah, opinion. Yeah, but what they're saying um, that But I would suspect in this case, they uh, the police will be expecting within a few hours of that postmortem starting uh, to know pretty much what became of Jay um, in, in terms of how he uh, ended up uh, dying. What they're saying is that there are areas, there's parts of the areas they have searched that they couldn't search, right? So those areas have been marked down as n not searched. So then they've had to get the more experienced searchers in there to go and do those areas. But what I think is a bit ironic is the parents have just paid for a Dutch forensic, forensic search team to fly over just today. They're supposed to be getting there today 
to do the search. And now, oh, look, the Spanish have found him. Hmm. Makes me wonder. In, in that particular location. And, and as in this case, and, and as with other cases we've seen in, in recent years, um, the amount of, of conspiracy theories and social media theories about what happened to this young man uh, just developed a life of their own, didn't they? How, um, how, how tricky does that make the police's job to sort of cancel out all that noise? To be honest, the police, if they uh, are wise, will just basically shut themselves off from most of it. Uh, and to be honest with you, you know, the people who live out there, they know about how, about the environment. They know when animals die out on them hills and them mountains, you get the scavenger birds. Yep, they know that, they've seen it. So if Jay was out in the open, in a ravine, be it, be it in a ravine or wherever, those birds would have found him. Those birds should have gave him up. They should have seen those birds and thought, hold on, what's over there? Because I cannot imagine the birds, scavenger birds, not finding a dead body. They go for anything. I don't say, oh, well, that's a human body. We're not going for that. We only go for sheep or cattle. They don't do that. They see food as food. So why didn't the birds show up? Um, some parts of the organisation will need to be screening that information and having a look at that information. And I want to know think about it. Exactly uh, and some where leads and lines of inquiry and suggestions yeah. might be followed up to a certain extent. But the police need to be led by what's in front of them. Uh, there's a, an old detective saying um, that you clear the ground from under your feet, which basically means before moving forward, um, you check out everything that you're standing in the middle of uh, and work forward from there. And if the police do that, then the distractions of all these weird, wonderful and wild theories uh, people come up with, and, and they can usually find something somewhere to hang these theories on, um, all of those will be noise in the background. Now, it might be distracting, it will result in major inquiries of the police, uh, but hopefully uh, they'll be in a position where they are dealt with by a media department rather than operational officers. It's not helpful. The main problem with it is it is so distressing for the family because they'll be exposed to all of these things, uh, some of which don't reflect well on Jay uh, in any event, um, and that will just be adding to their distress. Um, unless they've got actual things they have seen and heard for themselves, people would do well to keep their wild theories to themselves and certainly not put them on worldwide social media platforms. Sage advice. Uh, Peter Kirkham, former Detective Chief Inspector. Okay, I still think Thank you very much. About this. Well, let's uh, cross now to Tenerife. Uh, we're joined by the author and travel writer, Joe Corley, who, who is out there. And, and, and Joe, this news is only just broken in the last couple of hours. The body was discovered this morning. Uh, what is the, the response on the island? I think um, on the island, it's, it's one of shock, obviously sympathy. Um, it's, a, it's a tragic end. Um, the, 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 the community in Tenerife have been fully invested in this. It has been the talk at any social get together. Um, yeah, there's a whole lot of empathy um, within the, the, the expat community here. Um, is there surprise that, that, that this has been the outcome, given what, what you living there understand of the terrain and, and of that particular part of the island? I think the surprise from those that don't really know that area, uh, who found it hard to, to understand how he was found now, and it was relatively close to, to the village. Uh, but from those that know the area, like myself, uh, in some ways it's not a surprise. This is treacherous uh, terrain. Like Peter Kirkham just said, there are, there are parts that are inaccessible, um, very dangerous, and, and only for experienced mountaineers and the hikers. Um, it was entirely possible this is what happened. In, in fact, it is entirely probable this is what happened. What do you know about the actual location itself? You say it's relatively close to the village. Are you able to give us any, any sort of greater description? 
Not at this point. I know that it was very close to where the, the Jay's phone was last located, the last ping from his phone, which um, is probably maybe half an hour walk from the village. I think the the line of inquiry, well, there were several lines of inquiry, but the most probable um, route that Jay took was going to be downhill and people thought maybe he just headed to the ocean. He's nowhere, he's got nowhere near that. I mean, the ocean is a th three hour walk at best, if you're experienced and you have the right gear to get to the ocean and where he's, he was found or where the body was found was much closer to the village than, than the ocean. Right. I mean, it must have been an area that would already have been searched, mustn't it? I mean, the, the, there were so many search teams out there. How do you think it, he, he was missed? Again, like Peter Kirkham said, it's, it's a vast area and it's full of ravines and crevices. Um, the area around this would obviously have been searched, but it's highly possible that this, this particular place where it was found was overlooked. Um, the idea was they would search, then research. Uh, and search again, pinpoint in certain areas. And I guess the, the time for this particular area to be researched again had, uh, had come. And this is when they tragically found his body. It is a tragedy indeed. Joe Cawley, uh, author and travel writer, joining us from Tenerife. Thank you for joining us. Well, a short time ago, we brought you live footage of the England squad arriving back at Stansted Airport. So we saw Gareth Southgate coming off first uh, and then uh, one by one uh, members of the team filed out behind him. Well, not walking up. Not walking up. But this is sad. She's sad. But it's just... I'd like to know whereabouts his body was found. Bye. Oh, Hello. Let's close that down. Let's close that. Uh, what am I doing? Uh, what am I looking for? Oh, God. Google Maps. Google Maps. Now, the saying is nowhere near the beach. There we are. Head, nowhere near heading towards the beach. Near the area where his phone last pinged. Which we know has been searched and searched and searched. All right. So let's have a look. Mom, share this tab. Take them. Mom, Hmm. Oh, it's up here. <laughs> right. Now, we know his phone, the last couple of weeks, they've been saying, right, that his phone pinged around here. Yep. Pinged around there. So... Is there a ravine there? His body could have been, but this has been gone over by so many people walked around here. So I'd like to know whereabouts. Right, this has all been walked over. All this. Right. All this. all over here right 
So I'd like to know where he was. And you know what then? I'd like to know A, where the body was found, not the direct. Just say, oh, he's found there. Right? And then for the people who are out there been searching, like Christopher and the, and the father and the brother and the uncle and others have been out there searching. I turn around and say, excuse me, but we covered all that area. We've done all that area. You never found nobody. Plus there'd be a smell. You'd also get a smell of a body, a dead body. You really would. In that heat, yeah, definitely. So, yeah, it has got little ravines. It's got little ravines. These are only little ones, though. And these aren't big, deep ones. Why? These aren't big, deep ones. They're only, like, shallow. And he said he was nowhere near the beach. Well, I don't think he was because that guy, Christopher, was saying he got to, like, here with his friends the other day. And he was making his way over here. All here. Right? And he was having trouble himself. And he got to one point and he said, I'm sorry, but I can't even get past here. Right? He said, so I can't see Jay getting past here. So, I know he was all around that area. So, to me, it's, I'd like to know where about the body was found. If they're saying it was found in the area where his phone last pinged, it, which is by set about here, and about here, then his body's got to be It's hard to say. That's it. That's like a mountain. Yeah, that's a mountain. That is. So where around here was his body found? Being as it's been scoured and scoured and scoured. And it's just so... I'd be so annoyed with the police in one way. In one way, I'd be so annoyed that I've just forked out this money to get this Dutch team to come over today to land in Tenerife today to do a search Right, and then you go and find him. Yeah, right. So, I'd really like to know where about round here his body was found. Because I tell you now, if his body was found here, why weren't there no birds? Right? Plus, there'd be a smell. You'd smell it. In that heat, you would smell something was off. So, it doesn't... That's, it is, isn't it, Cars? It is. They're saying it is in the area where his phone last pinged. Well, his phone pinged round about here. Right? And I know, if you go over and watch... On TikTok and watch Christopher from Ten his, his name's Christopher Tenerife, right? He was all over this area the other day. 
to a point where he he could not go any further. He said, I can't go no further. He said, so I don't think Jay would have come this way. And he had trouble getting out of this ravine himself. He'd done it, but he had trouble. But as I said, he's not a, he's not a qualified hiker. He's not a qualified climber. He was just a volunteer that turned up and carried on searching daily. So I'd like to know where about around here if I could give his phone. And to be honest with you, I'll tell you now. Someone put in there recently. Yes. Yeah. Because I, everyone's been over that area. Everyone. B, no birds. Birds don't care what they eat. Food is food. C, no smell. You could get a, um, a, rotten, a, a really bad smell coming. You really would have. So, that's why I'd like to know where about it was found. Because this just... I said, if his body's up there, I did say, I've always said, I said, if his body is found up there, he's been put there. Right? Now, if we are to believe those messages that was coming out between um, Lucy and a friend, how her friend was saying, Lucy, just tell me what happened. I won't tell anyone, but she did. Right? And Lucy's going, oh, man, I mean, some shit and all this crap. And then she said, what about Rachel and Brad? Are they okay? And Lucy's turned my message back saying, Brad keeps having nightmares of seeing Jay in the ditch. Now, are we to believe those messages? I don't know. I don't know, but I also always said if his body is found upon them hills, it's because he was put there. And that rumour about him cutting his leg on a cactus... That is possibly because he had a cut on the leg, a knife wound on the leg. He wasn't put on no boat. Unless this isn't Jay, this may not be Jay, but they're saying the clothing is the same as his. He's got whatever else on him. And then they're saying that on about the phone. Well, where was the phone? Did the, Was his phone on him? Did, did he have his phone on him? That's something else I'd like to know. Because everyone's been looking for a flipping phone for three weeks. Everyone has been up them hills looking for a flipping phone. So did he have his phone on him? That would be one of my questions. And I wouldn't trust the Spanish. I'd be, I'd be going to the... Uh, how much do you get cost from English for someone from England to come and do the autopsy, please? I want someone from England to do the autopsy. Simple as. Because I don't trust you, fuckers. Christ. It's just too coincidental that today when they paid for these people to come over. Right? It's the day they find him. Why couldn't I find him three weeks ago? Why? Why then? Why now? Why wait until the day that the Dutch people would go to land with their dogs and all that law? Did they, oh look, we found the body. Yes, we believe it's Jay. The clothing is Jay's, the same as what he's described as wearing. 
but I'd like to know. But I, the autopsy is gonna come back saying he fell. He fell, and that's how he's got the cooked on his leg or this or that. But it's gonna be accidental death. So you know, I will be gobsmacked if it comes back suspicious death. And once it's ruled as accidental, that lets Lucy off, that lets Brad off, that lets Cuisine off, for them to go about their business and carry on again. And target the next gullible person. Because I swear to God, Jay and Lucy know a lot more than they are saying. A lot more. And as I said, uh, Paul, Paul Arnott, he actually did a walk. Let's see if I can find his video. It was only a short one. Right. And he kept saying, people are asking me to go and do a video of the Airbnb front door. So he did. He said, but I don't understand why they keep asking me to go and do this video. Go and get the video. Come on. Swear to God. Uh, uh, hey, what? Now I know why people do this. Did you all catch that? Just to clarify, no flipping doorbell. Right? Because apparently, Kwasim said the doorbell had the camera in it. That's a ring doorbell. Right? But they're quite big and bulky. You can stand at the end of someone's pathway, driveway, like, oh, they've got a ring doorbell. Oh, look, that house over there, up the road there, they've got a ring doorbell. You can see the ring doorbells. Right? So he was trying, because he said the doorbell had the camera in it. No, it didn't. There is no flipping doorbell on the door in the first place to have a flipping camera put in it. So that's a load of BS, Krasim. But this will come back as accidental death. Tell you now. If it comes back as anything else or suspicious or anything, I'll be gobsmacked. I'll be going, wow, they're actually doing their job. Because there's something not right about this. Something not right about this at all. That's why I'd like to know whereabouts his body was found. Maybe it wasn't, because from what they're saying, it was in a ravine. And it was a ravine they couldn't get to, so they've had to wait for the experienced searchers to go to these areas. 
and it was close to the village. Now, close to the village. Oh, what am I doing? I wouldn't say that is close to the village up there, right? Because there's the one little village and there's Masca. So I only say up here is that close to the village. Right, it isn't. It's a good walk, put it that way. So was it round here? His body was found. These look more like gorges, bigger gorges here that people would not have been able to have got into. And don't forget, from the back here, right, from the back here, there's a path that leads all the way down here. All the way down along the edge, bottom of this mountain, because that's a mountain. Alright. All the way down. Yeah, where was it that other guy was searching? Uh, it says it on one of his videos. Uh, um. Oh, come on. Heading down to the Barranco. Right, Barranco. But that's a Barranco. Right. <laughs> and... Oh, come on. That's a Barranco round here. So does that mean, does Barranco mean, um, like a gorge sort of thing? But I, I, you know, I, I feel sorry for the family if this is Jay, and I believe it is. I feel sorry for them, but I think they need the truth. I don't think they need this being whitewashed off now. Oh, it's an accident. No, because that was no way an accident. Too many, too many ifs. You know what I mean? Like, the argument on the beach, someone limping, um... I think the boat thing was just something else that was going on on the same night. Just so happened to be around about the same time that the fight was happening on the beach. Um, I, did he go up to that Airbnb on his own? No, I don't believe he did. If he went up that Airbnb, he was with Brad. And as for Lucy not knowing where that Airbnb was, she knew. She knew where it was. So, I feel sorry. I think the family needs the truth. The truth. Because this is not fair on them now. This is not fair at all. I'm going to see if there's anything else. No, there's not four giga yacht. Let's just see what these are saying here. Come on.
Well, now, perhaps that search team could go out and find the 48-year-old missing UK man who had an argument with his wife and was last seen on Thursday. He's missing in Tenerife as well. Perhaps I could go and find him. I'll give them a tip in future. Heads up. When you're out in somewhere like that, keep your head up as well and look into the sky because that's where you're going to find your one giveaway clue. I've been saying, from when I first heard about this case, I didn't start covering it until about a week after he went missing, and it was my son and his neighbour said, is anyone covering this case of this Jay Slating? I went, I am, I'm doing a live tonight, right? And I started doing a live on a Sunday night, right? And I said then, he's not alive. I just had this feeling then, no way is he going to walk up there and wander off, off a path, right? He wandered off onto a path onto, off from the road, so why would he do that? If he didn't want to walk all the way up that road, why didn't he just turn back and go to, back to where he came? You know what I mean? He's a 19-year-old lad. He wasn't stupid. Oh, Lucy, I hear you back in Tenerife next month.
if anyone has got a young lad, a young son, a nephew, going over to Kenner Reef this month and next month, show them the picture of Lucy May and tell them to steer clear of her. Yeah, let's focus on these other ones that have gone missing over there. No, we're not. I'm going to go. Close it down. Oh, God, what am I doing? Oh, fair enough. Right, so it's looking like it is, Jay. And I feel for his family because I know I wouldn't want to be in that position. But I still think there's a lot of um, suspicious activity going on around this case. Perhaps we can drop the idea of he got on a boat. I never did think he was on a boat because someone said it was about 8 30. When this boat, he left the, that little beach area and he went up. And then about 8.30, it did like it started circling around a certain area. And I said, that's the time Jay phoned, you know, Lucy phoned or whatever. Jay phoned Lucy. And I went, hold on. Jay sent her 
apparently, um, is ping location. So how could you send her his ping location if he's on a boat? And if the ping location was up in the hills? How could you do that? Because it wasn't him on a boat. Because if he was on that boat, when he made that call, his phone would have last pinged in the area of where that boat was. Not up on them flipping mountains. Anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. It was only a quick one. I was only popping on just to let you all know about this. Because some people watch it, some people don't. If you're watching on replay, please give this video a like. It does help. And... If you like what you're seeing here, consider subscribing. It's all free. Right. I've got other cases I want to look at now as well. They're still looking at the Sebastian Rogers case. Yeah, I've just finished the transcript of the second interview Chris and Katie Prohofuk done with the Duchess. Just finished typing that up. Thank God. But now, I'm a glutton for punishment. I'm typing the transcript up for the Nina Gomez, the ex-wife of Chris Proudfoot. Typing that up. But I've been, well, as I've been typing these transcripts up, it's amazing what you miss when you listen to it, to what, you know what I mean? You can miss so much when you're just listening to it. But when you're writing it up or typing it up, you, you think, oh, well, did he really say that? Did she say that? You know what I mean? So I will be doing another live soon on the Sebastian Rogers. Um, I'm going to look into the case of this 48-year-old 40, who's gone missing in Tenerife. He may just think, oh, God, I'm not going back to that old guy, that hack of, uh, 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 what is he? Hack of, uh, Whatever. That old cow. She always moans at me. He may just thought, no, I'm not going home. I don't want to go back to her. But it may not be. He may have walked off in temper, in a mood, and just found. You don't know. So I'm going to look into that case. And that is a 48 year old man from the UK. But there's a couple of cases I want to look at in the US as well. Okay? So, please subscribe to stay updated with all future videos and lives. I would really appreciate it. And I'll see you all soon. I didn't start with me opening. Because I've just come on. But I'm going to end with my, with my closing. So, see you all soon. Bye. And thank you for being here with me.